Hello! Whether you clicked on this video because you would like to better understand some X, or you're really trying to get better at DEX, or you just can't resist videos with titles that rhyme, not a problem, you will get all three for the price of one in this video. So before we jump into some X, let's take a look at our data set. Uh, here we have our, our sales data. We have 10 rows of sales data. In the first column we have time. In the second column we have sales information. Third column has margin. And then the fourth column is a calculated column where we multiply sales by margin to get our profit. So, so far so good, everything makes sense. Now, um, even though everything makes sense, in reality there is something to think about here because in our formula we're multiplying column sales from our table sales by column margin percent from our table sales. And somehow it works. Why do I say somehow? Well, the problem is that sales is a column and in the column we have 10 rows and margin is a column. Margin percent column has 10 rows. So why does, this, why does multiplying one column by another work, uh, work in this case? And the reason it works is because that formula, that command is executed one row at a time. And when it's executed one row at a time, we're not dealing with a column, we're dealing with a cell in that column. And that only happens in this particular case. So if I were to use the same formula in the measure, it would not work. So uh, we need to remember that, that the only time we can use the column and uh, we can do math on the column is in this scenario when uh, this column is trivialized to a single row, to a single cell. And now as, as this formula gets executed, it's executed for one row at a time. And therefore we're not dealing with a column of values. We're dealing with a cell in that column. What I've done here is I've created a table in uh, a Power BI report and I just drag the same columns from our table that you saw before. Time ID, sales, margin, and profit. What we're gonna do now is instead of uh, using our column in this matrix, we're gonna add a few things and our goal and uh, the means of us learning the sum x and calculate functions will be to create a new measure we're going to call it profit one and we're going to try to implement the same logic now in a measure uh, that we did not create in a, in a table. And the reason we want to do that is we don't always have a luxury of adding more columns to the table. Our model could be already large. We might have tens of millions of rows in our table. So every time we add a new column, our table just gets bigger, bigger and bigger. It takes longer and longer to save the model and the model just becomes clunky. So if we are able to create the same logic without having to create a column, uh, one could argue that it's usually more preferable than having to persist and uh, everything into a column, into a table. So let's see if we can create a measure that, 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 that will give us the same values for margin percent and profit without having to um, uh, create these things in, in the column. So if you remember, our profit was a simple mu multiplication of sales and margin. So let's see if we could just do the same multiplication here and see if this works. So I'm going to type sales, sales. You can already see that uh, Power BI does not like um, does not like those values. And the reason this is happening is because in a measure, as I said before, this code does not work because now it's looking at cell sales as a column and it's saying, listen, column has a lot of values. I don't know how to deal with this. You need to trivialize it to the point where I have a scalar value here or something that returns a value, not a table, and a value here. Otherwise, I cannot do, I don't know how to do math on this. So we're going to rewrite it. And we're going to rewrite, instead of saying uh, those column, we're going to use a sum function. And now we can sum all of our sales. And we can multiply it by margin. So uh, usually when you work with ratios, things like margins, um, it doesn't make sense to do a sum. We're going to do an average. And then let's see what this does. I'm going to bring this over to our matrix. And then let's see what it does. So we could see that um, our numbers deviate 
in profit from the profit numbers coming out from the table and our sum is different and uh, you can obviously know why effectively what we have done we took the sum of all sales which in our case is 975 and we multiplied by average of the margin which in our case is 46 so that's just an average of these numbers and uh, that result of it is 975 times 0 0.46 is 444 4. so that does not give us the correct number and why does it not give us the correct number is because we want to apply the margin for every sales number. We don't want to sum sales and multiply by average number. That gives us a wrong, uh, wrong value. So we want to find a way to do what this calculation does. So as you remember, profit executed the formula at every line. And the way this function works, it does not do that. It, uh, you know, it does first, it calculates the sum so it does not do it one row at a time. It calculates the total sum for all of the rows. Then it calculates the average for all of the rows, multiplies one by the other, and we get this number. That's not what we want. Okay, so our first attempt to recreate profit failed miserably. Let's see if we could do better with the sumx function. So um, sumx works in a following way. Let's just type it out and break down all of the components of this function. So sum x, and you can see that the first parameter of the text is the table. So in our case, we only have one table, sales, so I will just type in sales. And then the, th the next parameter is expression, and that's where it becomes really interesting. So as you can see, and let me zoom in on this code a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see. Okay, so you can see that uh, some x function takes the table first and then the second one is expression. So what is expression? Well, it turns out that uh, in some x we, we have the same luxury of using columns uh, as we did in our calculated column. So here I could go ahead and spell out the same, uh, essentially the same DAX as, as I did in my column. So we're going to multiply sales by margin. And we're going to be enjoying the same benefits here as we did when we created a new column. So here we have um, two columns, sales, 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 and sales margin. But because it returns a sum of an expression evaluated for each row in a table, literally what this will do is, instead of multiplying this whole column, I don't need to do sum, I don't need to do min max, I could just use the column name, and because this column name will be evaluated for each row in a sales table, we will not be dealing with a column, we will be dealing with a single cell. So sumx is a really convenient function because we're able to use columns, um, but only consider one cell in the column of a current row. And therefore our math works. We're multiplying each, for each row, we're gonna multiply the value of sales times the margin. And then whatever this mathematical equation returns will get summed up for every row. So effectively it will execute the logic we had in the profit column in our table on the fly and once that calculation is done it will not be taking any additional any additional space in our table so to summarize you got to be pay, you got to pay attention to what type of a function you're working with and what kind of parameter this function takes so in case of some of a sum function sum function does not take um, an expression it takes a column and by me specifying a column, what it'll say, it actually will add up all of these numbers in the column. So if my column has number of values, they will all get summed up and a single scalar value will get returned. Uh, if I say some X, so the first parameter is table. So it'll take a table. So um, it doesn't have to be the, the, the physical table. You could uh, do some manipulation with the table. You could do, a values uh, if you just want to return a column 
You could do filter and other functions. By the way, I'll be doing uh, a deep dive in all of those features and functions later in the uh, in in the subsequent videos. So stay tuned. So um, once you specify the, the table, uh, what SumX will do, it will execute whatever expression you specify here uh, for each row. And that's, um, that's, uh, that's awesome, right? So we're able to specify a column. So even though it says expression, normally if a function takes an expression, you cannot pass a column uh, in there because column has many values. But some functions like SumX will execute that expression for every row. And that is why a column gets shrunk into a single cell in that column for every row in a table. And that's why uh, we're able to do math on the column. So sales, sales times margin. So hopefully this cleared up some confusion around how SumX function works. Why is it different from some functions? Hopefully you guys now have a better understanding of what a scalar value is and what needs to happen if you need to do some math um, for an expression where you can use a column and where you can't. Hope you found this video informative and please come back again for more. Thanks. Bye.